Heather and I am the aquatics curator here at Josh's Frogs and today I'm here to talk to you about an exciting product line that we carry uh, for reptiles, amphibians, but also for fish. If you're not aware, Rapashi is a uh, no filler, um, fresh ingredients uh, food that you can make for your fish at home. Um, we're going to show you how you can do that. Um, if you're not familiar with these products, uh, they are a gel premix. They come in sort of a powdered form and it has all sorts of ingredients. Um, there's, there's things like alfalfa, seaweed, krill, um, fresh like squid, mussel. There's all sorts of, there's, there's um, a different types of like flowers and <laughs> like hibiscus and rose hip and different things that are uh, catered to the different needs of your fish. We uh, carry different types of diets um, some of the most popular ones that we use here for our fish, such as these Cory cats here. Uh, these were bred in house. And then I've got a uh, Ancestris pleco. Uh, these are some of the ones that are going to be, uh, they're going to love rapashi food. Um, a lot of these diets will sort of sink to the bottom. Um, you can attach them to rocks, you can attach them to discs that are scored, um, anything that your gel will adhere to. So basically to make this diet, what you'll need is some water. Uh, any tap water is fine. Um, you may want to dechlorinate it a little bit, but it's usually not a big deal once you've cooked it. Uh, you can use boiled water um, on your stove or you can just microwave it. What I usually do is I'll take, uh, it's one part, so it's one part rapashi to three parts water. So I'll take this one here, this is the biggest container. Um, here I'm gonna take about uh, one third cup for Pashi. Put it in this deli cup. I, I like to use our 16 ounce cups to mix these and I'll show you in a little bit how, how easy it is to serve from there. Um, and then you'll do three parts, like I said, water. Two. Three. And then what we do is we just mix it. Uh, you can use any utensil at all, um, spoon, knife, fork, just mix it real good. It smells real fresh. Um, it's got a lot of high quality ingredients in it. And once it's mixed, you pop it in the microwave for about three minutes until it's boiling, and then you let it cool. Um, ideally, you'll cover it and let it cool for uh, at least a few hours. Um, you can let it cool overnight is usually what I do. I will label, so we have here some pre-made. Uh, I'll label what it is and I'll label the date and I'll pop it in the fridge. Uh, what's nice about these foods, they are freshly made. Like I said, there's no fillers. Um, so they don't, they do perish. Um, usually it can last about two weeks in the fridge. And you can you can do them you can put, put them in a variety of different containers. You could do the uh, when you when you're done cooking your rapashi, you can put it you can just put it in the cup and put it in the fr uh, fridge, or you can put it in a mold uh, and let it freeze if you want to keep it for longer. Uh, it can last in the freezer for up to six months. Uh, in the fridge, it'll last up to like I said two weeks. Um, what I like to do when I'm feeding my little catfish here at uh, Josh's Frogs. I will just simply take this cup, it's good to go. Um, it's all solid, it's all well mixed. Um, I'll sort of score it, cut it into little portions. Um, you can cut it wherever you want. You can cut it into little pieces for smaller fish. You can use a teeny tiny little bit. If you have like a two and a half gallon tank that has a few shrimp, or if you have like a, if you're growing a lot of these uh, catfish or uh, cichlid fry or live bears. Uh, our guppies here really love rapashi as well. Um, that I will mention, so rapashi diets, because they're a gel, um, they're better for fish that browse. Uh, and what's nice is that they will last in the aquarium uh, 24 hours, no problem, because again, they don't have the fillers and all the extra fish meal and other ingredients that tend to, or uh, the corn and things like that, they don't tend to break down or foul in the water as quickly. So they can last up to a day, they can be grazed on throughout the day, that's why they're great for a lot of fry. Um, so fry are, as you know, uh, baby fish, or you may not know, fry are baby fish, and they are continuously growing. So what's nice about our pasture diets is that it allows them to graze all day. If you are feeding your fry, uh, we recommend this diet here, the Spawn and Grow. I use this for all my growing and then also for conditioning fish. 
Um, it is a very high fat diet. So if you're gonna be feeding a general community tank, you want something more like the Community Plus here. This is your general omnivore diet. If you are looking to uh, boost carotenoid uh, intake, you wanna get a little more red coloration in your fish. This is the one I opened right here, the red rum. Uh, it's kinda like the super pig, but for fish, if you're familiar with uh, the reptile diets. Um, if you're looking to spoil your goldfish, a uh, goldfish really love the super gold. It has peas and other ingredients that will aid in their digestion. Uh, great for fancy goldfish that occasionally will have issues. Uh, bottom scratcher is your general invertivore diet. Uh, this diet will include things like I said, squid, mollusks, but also uh, insect meal. Uh, great for a lot of meat-eating plecos. Uh, as is pictured here, a lot of your fancy plecos actually do not eat algae. Uh, but for other uh, insectivores, rub pie is a great choice. Um, this is great for a lot of carnivorous type fish. It has a nice little live there uh, on the package. Um, a lot of your uh, platy sword tails and things like that are actually insectivores. Um, so I showed you the Spawn and Grow, show you the Community Plus. Another great diet is the, uh, well, it's called Morning Wood, <laughs> but it's for uh, xylivores, which are specifically your uh, uh, wood eating catfish, such as your uh, royal plecos, like the one pictured here. Um, and what's really nice is that also if you're feeding something as big as that royal pleco, uh, as you probably noticed, uh, this little bit of food goes a long way. So this package could feed your fish for quite a while, uh, even though you're only getting a little bit of powder. Um, another great food is the Agapo Explorer. This is gonna be more for your Amazon fishes, like your tetras, your kerosens, uh, other um, foraging species. Uh, what's nice about this diet is it has nuts and seeds as its focus, um, because a lot of fish in the Amazon actually do feed on things that fall into the river from the trees. And then another great diet, the one I had pictured here that's very dark green. This is called Soylent Green. We use this a lot for our plecos, but it's also great for uh, Mbuna, kind of like the one in the picture here, which are known as off-wux uh, eaters in the wild. Uh, they're sort of specialized that their mouth parts are meant for grazing on rocks and feeding on not only the algae, but the little microorganisms that grow in the algae. Um, so this actually replicates that diet. If you're doing obligate algae eaters, uh, Super Green is great especially for trophies and some other types of uh, algae eating fishes. For more great information, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram, like us on Facebook, and visit us at www.joshesfrogs.com. <laughs>